All right, what's up guys? Uh, just giving you an update here on the truck. So as you guys know, we did the lift kit on it and uh, wheels and tires and everything. And everything's been going great with the lift kit. I'm really happy with the truck. Um, I have had one small, um, actually two issues. You guys know the control arms didn't fit. I'm still going back and forth with uh, Magoy's over that. And uh, I'm not very happy with their customer service, unfortunately. They're, they're kind of giving me the runaround. They're not really wanting to do much about it. Um, I'm probably just gonna have to end up going with a different control arm, unfortunately, and try to return these ones uh, through the seller that I got it from. Um, but I'm still in contact with them and trying to get them to do the right thing. Um, one other issue I ran into was uh, one of the rear shocks blew out already on it, which is kind of crazy. So I'm gonna come and show you guys here. So I've already been in contact with them about this. They, they said they will replace it under warranty if it's in fact bad. Um, it's pretty obvious it's bad. I sent them a picture of it, but let me flip the camera around here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. This shock looks really good. It's clean, there's no oil on it. But if you come over to this side here, this one is absolutely just puking. And you can see there's oil coming all the way out from the top of it, running down and dripping out of the bottom. It actually will, will get a little drip. That drip right there is just from sitting here for about 15 minutes. So um, that shock is definitely blown out. So I'm gonna need to get them to replace that. Um, but just to show you guys some of the updates here I've done, uh, we got the new taillights on. The new LED taillights are killer. I'm really loving them. Um, they've got like a really cool C light built in for the running light. They've got the brake light and turn signal separate with super bright LEDs. I went ahead and put aftermarket LED reverse lights in. They're super bright for nighttime, which is working out really good. And then I also went in here and on the license plate lights, they upgraded, upgraded these to LEDs as well. So that lights up a lot better at night. The truck definitely has a much more modern look to it now. I'm really digging it, guys. This thing is coming out pretty much exactly the way I wanted it. Um, there's a few little things I still need to do to it, but I'm very happy with it. And then check out the front end now. You guys check this out. So I did the one piece front end conversion on this, the headlight conversion. Basically, um, these are aftermarket um, housings that convert this truck to a one piece because typically you remember they have the cat eye. They have the one headlight here, turn signal down here, and then they have the white uh, painted grill piece. So these are LED, I've got LED uh, bulbs in them and um, I haven't switched these out yet to LEDs. These are still the, the um, factory bulbs, which actually look pretty good. I mean, it's got a bunch of these LEDs in the side, which is cool. So I really like the look of this. It kind of reminds me of the Avalanche style truck, uh, which is pretty cool. But yeah, I'm probably going to change the bow tie though to either a black or a white bow tie. I haven't decided yet. Probably do a black bow tie. But other than that, I mean, she's, she's looking killer. She's looking real good. So now I want to bring you guys, you know, up to date with this thing and, and tell you how it's going. Um, one of the issues that I knew I was going to have with this when I lifted it and put these big wheels and tires on it was stopping. So the stopping power is definitely not as good as it was. Uh, the brakes are definitely having to pull a lot more weight now because I don't know if you guys realize, but when you lift one of these trucks, the parts that you add to the truck add a ton of weight and all this and all the, also you when you lift the truck the center of gravity the roll center it changes so whenever you stop you have all this weight trying to pull down when you stop and you've got the bigger wheels and tires that are weighing it down as well um, we've added about a thousand pounds to this truck just with the wheels and tires and lift kit i actually scaled it before and after i did this project and before i did the project the truck weighed in about seven thousand pounds on the truck scale now we're at 8,000 pounds. So that's a ton of extra weight and that's why the truck's not stopping good. So typically uh, what people, when they lift these trucks and do this, they don't address this issue and they just live with it. I mean, you can, but there are times where, you know, I've, I've already, you know, want, wished I had better brakes. So without further ado, check this out. So this is from EBC. Um, these are not eBay. This is a very good, good company located in England that makes brakes for a lot of vehicles. This is a kit that goes for this Duramax truck and it's called their Stage 8 kit. So this consists of their heavy duty uh, coated rotors with drilled in slots in them. Uh, we've got the Russell stainless braided brake lines all the way around for it. And it's come, it comes with all of their special Stage 8 brake pads. These pads that go with these rotors are designed to work together for this vehicle, for a heavy vehicle that tows and stuff. So these pads are, are minimal dust, but much stronger braking power with the, coupled with these rotors. So I'm very excited 
um, to get these brakes upgraded because I do tow a lot with this vehicle and I tow a ton of stuff all over, you know, with it. And, you know, basically everything I've been doing to this truck, we're getting ready for Texas 2K. I don't know if you guys know, but we're going to Texas 2K with Scarlett. So this is going to be towing all the way to Texas. And so I'm trying to get this truck dialed in because the race is in March and I'm trying to get this thing 100% ready for that trip. Cause that's a very long trip with a heavy trailer behind it. So going to upgrade the brakes. Also got some other things we're going to address. Um, I have not decided or not if I'm going to re-gear this. I'm probably going to re-gear it because now with the 35 inch tires, um, the RPM is much lower on the highway cruising at like 70 miles an hour. We're turning like 1500 RPM. And most people will be like, oh, that's cool. You get better gas mileage. Well, kind of not really. So with a tow rig, you have what's called an optimal RPM for towing. And that's where the turbo's online and everything's there so the truck doesn't lug down the freeway. Well, every truck is different. Ford, Chevy, Dodge, they're all different. This particular truck, optimal towing range is right about 2000 RPM to 2100. That's where max cruising, cruising torque and the turbo is set up to be for towing loads. So I'm at 1500 right now. And that's really killing my performance when I'm cruising down the highway with a trailer behind me. I mean, this thing does really well with the tune that I've got on here. It pulls, you know, trailer just fine. But I do find myself, you know, seeing the truck have to downshift to fifth a lot. And it doesn't stay in sixth gear on the highway much unless I'm doing like 80 plus miles an hour, which that's just too much. I don't need to be going over 100 miles an hour in this truck down the highway. It's a big truck. There's no reason to do that. Um, so... If I re-gear it, I'm probably going to go with the 456, and I'm going to have to change the front gears in the transfer case for the four-wheel drive and the rear end. And what that will do is that with the math and the tire diameter and everything, that'll bring the RPM back up to stock or actually 100 RPM over stock. So we'll get all that you know response back. We'll be able to cruise in six gear and be at the optimum RPM. Everything will be happier. And it also will take a lot of stress off of the driveline and the transmission because when you put the bigger tires on here, your gear ratio effectively gets higher. So all that, what that does is that puts more stress on the transmission, the torque converter, the stall, and you're just putting a lot more added stress on the truck, especially when you're towing that it's just not what it was designed for. So re-gearing it with the 456s, we'll put it right back to stock where the, where it's supposed to be. RPMs will be exactly where they need to be. It'll take all the stress off the transmission, the drive line, the rear end, and we'll just get a lot more low end torque and get all that factory towability back out of the truck so the last duramax i had i had the same i had pretty much a six inch lift kit same size tire on it i never re-geared it and i always wanted it re-geared and i always found myself uh wanting that that grunt back that the oem setup gives you that that low end response and just tipping into it on the highway where it just takes off without having to downshift i always found myself missing that over several years that i owned that truck and there were a couple situations where i was towing very heavy with that truck a huge trailer and i got stuck actually on a hill it was a there was no way to get a run at this hill and i had to make a sharp left with the trailer on the back from a dead stop and Believe it or not, the hill was actually so steep and the gear ratio was so off because of the tires that wide open throttle from a dead stop, the truck would not move. It wouldn't pull the trailer up the hill. I actually had to put the truck in four low to get it going, which I don't want to get in that situation again. Um, it's just, it's way too much stress on the truck. You know, granted it handled it for years. I'm trying to do this truck, uh, do it right. So I'm going to spend the money. And most likely I'm going to get those gears and we're going to switch those out. And I will give that to you guys in a video in the future. So, um, but for today, we're going to tackle the brakes. We're going to upgrade the brakes on this thing and we're going to get her stopping on a dime. So I'm really excited to get this going here and take you guys with me on this little uh, journey. We're going to upgrade the brakes. It's not too bad on this truck. Um, all the components are super heavy. Um, these rotors weigh 70, a pound, 70 pounds or more alone just for the, just for two of them. So there's like 150 pounds just in brake rotors on this thing, which is massive. So, and then the wheels and tires, you know, so everything's heavy, but we're going to go ahead and get it done. Uh, as far as the way the, the brakes on the Chevys are set up on these Duramaxes, they're super easy to work on. There's no special tools required. Um, you know, I really like it. You know, I've done, done a lot of brakes in these trucks and I've done them on other trucks. And this truck is really not bad to work on compared to others. So, all right, well, enough talking. Let's get started. All right, guys, I got the wheels and tires off on the front and 
this is all the stuff we were putting on the other video and lift kit everything's still doing really good kryptonite tie rods loving them the front end is just awesome so the only part that i'm really bummed about still is these control arms we gotta get something done about these stock control arms because i don't like them i hate them so it's really frustrating to pay good money for aftermarket control arms and them not fit and not work out so we are definitely going to figure that out whether or not i have to go with a set of cognito control arms or whatever but it's going to happen everything else though is working great um haven't really had any issues at all with it besides the the shock that i showed you guys so um you can see here here's the stock brakes they are very good size on this truck um pictures don't do this thing any justice but these are some massive brakes uh, these discs are huge the calipers are just massive on these things but even then it's still not enough when you put all this extra weight on especially when you're towing so um, i'm going to go ahead and get this stock stuff off and then we're going to compare it to the new stuff over there and then we'll get those on there all right so the way this works to get these off it's very simple we just have basically a couple of bolts one there one there you pull these two bolts out these are the slide pin bolts they slide right out the caliper literally just comes right off and then we're going to pull the backing um the uh, caliper bracket there's two more bolts on the back side here uh, i just got one bolt there and one on the bottom and then the bracket comes off and the rotor just slips right off there's no press tools needed or anything like other models so very simple to get this truck uh to get it apart and work on it one of the reasons why i love these trucks i just they're just so easy to work on so that really goes a long ways with a heavy truck because when you're towing and you're using this thing you're going to be doing maintenance on it and so the easier it is to do maintenance it's just better at the end of the day so i'm going to go ahead and get this caliper off and then pull this rotor off all right so we got the brakes off on this corner here um, as you can see it's very simple just one there one there hung the caliper up by a zip tie so we don't stress on that brake line that's very important um, one thing i am going to be doing now with this lift kit is retorquing all the lift kit because i've had it on now for a little over 500 miles so you always want to make sure every bolt you did on the lift kit gets checked and retorqued after 500 miles very important because things settle and things can loosen up and you don't want that to happen because bad things can happen from that but so far i've uh, been kind of inspecting all my work going over everything everything still looks really good i don't really see any issues um so now we get to come over and i'll show you guys a stock rotor here so this was a stock rotor and you can see there's nothing wrong with it it was in great shape um GM did a really good job with the brakes on these trucks. As you can see, this is the original OEM pads. There is still a ton of meat left on these brakes. There was really nothing wrong with them. And this truck has 90,000 miles on it. So the brakes on these trucks are really good from the factory, but there's always room for improvement. So we're gonna go ahead and get this new one on here. Look at this baby. So we've got the front and the rear here. So um, they look the same when you first look at them. But if you look closely, the hat size see that one first that one there's a slight difference so the hat size is a little bit different so we're going to go ahead and now put one of these front rotors on so we're going to go ahead and grab a left left one for the front because they are directional so i believe this is the front if we look at the hat on this we'll compare it to the stock one Let's see if we got it here no actually no kind of nope it's not that's a rear so you gotta be really careful because they look so similar so we'll come over here to this one then yeah that does look right you can see that one so we'll compare it here there we go got the right one all right let's throw this baby on holy cow this thing's heavy they feel they do feel actually heavier than the oem rotor which is surprising to me i thought they would be about the same size but see if i can do this one-handed holy cow these things weigh a ton oh this is difficult all right Whew. holy cow that was tough all right oh man that looks really good so got the rotor on all we gotta do is basically take caliber racket put it back on slam the new pads in and then torque everything down to spec you always want to make sure you torque these bolts on these brakes on these trucks because there's a lot of weight up here and there's a lot of force when you're braking so if those bolts loosen up on you you have a bad day so make sure you torque all your bolts on the trucks guys don't try to cut corners and just use an impact gun that is not enough so i'm gonna go ahead and put this all back together and then i'm gonna start working on the other side 
All right, so we got the front brakes all done. They're looking good. We got the stage eight brake kit on here from EBC. Really excited to see how these do. Uh, I was doing the rears and we ran into an issue. So anytime you're doing vehicle repairs, especially on a big truck like this, I pulled this, you know, you always want to check everything out. I pulled this rotor off and I found a bunch of fluid leak in here. So these are the rear park brake shoes and they're just soaked with oil. So unfortunately that means the rear axle seal that's inside here is bad. So I went ahead and uh, checked the other side and the other side's in much better shape. The pads are dry, but you can see we're already starting to leak a little bit. So it needs rear axle seals. So I'm glad I found that before we go to Texas 2K with this thing. So we're gonna go ahead and tear these hubs apart and we're gonna replace the axle seals on the rear here. Um, it's not really too big of a job, it is involved. You do need a few special tools, um, but it's not impossible. So I'm gonna show you guys how to replace the rear axle seals on these. And um, you know, if you guys have one of these trucks at home, great. If not, well, at least you get to see me do it. And then um, I'm gonna get this fixed, so. All right, so on these axles with these big GM uh, three quarter ton and one ton axles, what's really cool is you take these four or these bolts off on this outside here. This is actually the axle that runs all the way into the housing. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull this out and you'll see this is the actual axle that actually drives the entire truck. So these are actually serviceable separate from the bearing. So we're gonna pull this thing out. Be nice and careful not to damage anything inside. But look at the size of this thing. Look at the splines on that. So you could tell how heavy duty these things are built because there's no way you're breaking one of these very easily. So once we get this out, set that on the ground there. And then now we can get to our inner bearing seal here. So what we're gonna have to do is there's a clip in here we gotta pop off and then there's a basically a nut that's got a special tool that we need so we're gonna have to go get that tool we're gonna back that nut all the way out and then this entire wheel bearing hub assembly is gonna come off and then it'll, the seal will be inside and we'll be able to get to it so I'm gonna start taking this apart and then I'll bring you guys back when I get inside all right so I got the inner uh, race retainers out and everything so this should just slide right out now So, you guys will see, this is basically the wheel bearing for the back of the truck here, this big bearing right here. And then this is the seal. You could see it failed big time. So you can actually see, you see the seal, how it's, it's flat and then rises up. So this seal is literally just worn out is the problem. So that's why it's leaking. So you can see here's the other piece of it that's sitting on the spindle of the truck. So what we're gonna have to do here is we're gonna have to clean all this up. I'm gonna brake clean all this out and I'm gonna change the inner seals. Um, the bearings actually look pretty good. They feel really smooth. So the bearing itself is fine on that one. There's two, there's one on the inner and then there's one here on the outer. So you always wanna make sure these bearings are in good shape and they feel really good. So the cool thing about these trucks is the bearings are constantly uh, oiled and lubricated by the differential oil. So that's why the bearings last almost forever in these things because you have a constant supply of oil. However, if you don't change your oil, well, you know where that goes. So this oil looks really good because guess what? I've changed it. So the oil is good shape, bearings are good. So that's gonna save us a ton of time and a ton of money on this repair. So all we gotta do is uh, we gotta pop those seals out and you can even see, look at this one. You can see how it's just, it's shot. So it's time for a new one. So we're gonna pop those out, pop the new ones in. Then we're gonna put all this back together and we have to set the preload on these bearings properly. Otherwise we're gonna smoke the bearings when we put it back together. So there's a procedure to do that, which I'll show you guys when we go back together. All right guys, so we got it all back together here. Uh, it was basically reverse uh, procedure of removal. Got a new seal in there. Everything looks good. Uh, the rotors look amazing. Um, this is a special tool that I was telling you guys about that you need for this job. This is a uh, GM, see if you can get in the light here. This is the hub seal tool. It's got a bunch of prongs on it. Basically what you do is that nut that I spun off there in the, in the first part of the video, you put that back on with this tool and you go to 50 foot pounds and then you back it off half a turn for by hand and then you put the cotter pins in. So 
When you do that, basically what you're doing is you're presetting the load on the bearings, on the wheel bearings. If you don't do that right, then you have major issues. So everything's going back together really smooth. I got this all resealed. Everything's all sealed up with silicone now. I'm gonna clean off some of the excess here and get it looking really clean, but really happy with how it's turning out. So I'm just setting the parking brake and then I'm gonna put the new pads on and the back will be all done. All right, so got the brakes, the wheel bearings are all resealed on the rear axle. So everything's awesome, ready to go now for a long time. So it shouldn't have any more leaks. Brakes are looking great. So now the next stage. So we're gonna be changing all the brake lines on the truck with the Russell stainless steel braided kit, which is gonna give us better pedal feel, gonna give us more clamping force on the brakes. So I'm gonna start changing out those lines now. I'm gonna get these all swapped in and I'm gonna bleed the brake system and then the brakes will be done. And then we got another thing we're gonna be doing in this truck that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna share with you guys here in a little bit, so. All right guys, well, oh man, has this been a hell of a job. So as you can see, we have Deaver six inch leaf springs that we're switching the truck over to. So we're getting rid of the blocks that were here with the lift kit. And the reason why we're doing that is because it gets our factory geometry on the rear axle back. And so we don't have issues with axle wrap and things you hear about people having issues where they need traction bars and all these crazy supports. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna get us our geometry back to where it's pretty much stock. It's gonna set our pinion angle better so when we accelerate the axle doesn't try to wrap up in the front and ruin the U-joints and all kinds of issues there because you know, typically you don't need to do everything we're doing to this truck, but if you want to tow heavy with it and you're going to use it for a long time, then that's why you do things like this. So I'm not building this truck just for looks. So I'm going the extra mile for a reason because we're going to be towing the race trailer all around the country. We're going to tow our fifth wheel RV, uh, toy hauler. So this truck's going to be used for a lot of heavy uh, loading and, and towing. So that's why I've spent so much time getting the geometry on this lift kit right, doing everything right. So um, it definitely adds a lot of expense and a lot of labor doing all this stuff. But if you're gonna keep the truck forever, for a long time, and you want everything to basically um, ride like the truck was lifted from the factory, this is what you have to do. So everything that we've done is try to keep this thing riding better and get better ride quality and do things right. So um, it was a bear to get the old springs out, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I've been messing with this now for a few hours. Um, you know, I was thinking to myself, two bolts, how hard could it be? Famous last words, right? <laughs> so the extended Titan fuel tank was in the way as well from getting one of the shackle bolts out and drop the fuel tank. Um, yeah, so finally got the new springs in. Everything's lined up. I'm really excited because we're going back together. Now we're on the home stretch. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this uh, tightened up. I'm going to torque all the U-bolts down and then we're going to bleed the brakes and we'll be done. So... Here we go, almost there. <laughs> <laughs> what a journey. I think it'll be worth it. All right guys, well, got everything buttoned up here. Got another little surprise for you. We got these awesome two inch spacers. So these things are super heavy duty. They're all billet aluminum. And now the front to rear uh, track width is gonna match. So on these Chevys, when you lift them, it pushes the front tires out because of the knuckle geometry on these lift kits. So the back tires are always sitting in further in the front. It doesn't really look very good. So these spacers correct that. So now the front and rear tires are going to be even front to back. So I did that. Got the new Deaver six inch leaf springs in here. These things are awesome. Look at that. Really liking how this is coming out. Got the stainless braided brake lines. Everything's just looking really awesome. So Next thing I'll be doing in a future video here is I'm gonna put airbags on the back here. So the airbags are gonna replace these bump stops and then um, put onboard air, compressor, and all that good stuff. But uh, for now, this is gonna do it. So uh, I'm gonna do a little ride, uh, ride and drive after this here. I'm gonna bleed the brakes, take it for a ride, and I'll give you guys some feedback on how it rides and if it's any different. All right, guys. So I've been driving it now with the new Deaver Springs on there and the new brakes. And my first impression is I love it. So it rides a lot better now, much smoother. Uh, it's just awesome. See a Deaver Springs in there. Uh, one thing I noticed is when I take off now, I used to get this uh, kind of a clunk feeling from accelerating hard from a stop. And that was actually the axle wrapping because of the blocks that were in there. So without the blocks and the leaf spring, this new leaf spring in there now. 
the the geometry here is literally like factory you can see there's no block anymore so now when it takes off from a dead stop it's solid it feels like stock again so i'm really happy about that so when i have a big trailer or big loads on here i'm not going to have that issue anymore and i don't need traction bars like you guys see i'll have sticking down under the trucks anymore so that issue solved ride quality has definitely improved um, but yeah overall the brakes are awesome it stops way better than stock so i'm very happy with that but yeah so the truck's coming good i'm really happy with it um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to level the mirrors and I'm going to do a, a video on that and I'm going to uh, do a fog light, uh, dome light mod, uh, rear spots. So I'm going to hook up these rear spots to come on when you unlock the truck to light up the truck at night. And I'm also going to hook them up so when you're in reverse, it floods back and shows you behind you. Then I'm also going to do another mod where these turn signals are going to be on all the time with the running lights as well. So just like the newer trucks, so those are on with the running lights on the truck. And then uh, we should be pretty set. Uh, she's doing good, everything's going good on it. So she's just about ready for Texas 2K to tow that trailer in Scarlet all the way down to Texas and back. So I've got a few other little things I wanna do to it. Um, there's gonna be a whole nother section that I'm gonna do here, which is gonna address the interior. So um, it's got leather interior fully loaded, which is nice, but it's just very plain. So um, I'm gonna change the, uh, the gauges, the cluster, a lot of the trim. I'm gonna upgrade a lot of that stuff and make it more modern. So that's gonna be the next thing there. So, all right, well, that ends it now. Uh, hopefully you guys liked the video. A uh, ton of work's been going into the truck, so I just thought I'd share it with you guys. Um, you know, you guys aren't really truck guys. A lot of you guys watching my channel, but um, this is gonna be a big, big piece of the channel with Scarlet because this is going to be my reliable transportation to get her to the races and get you guys better content. So um, that's going to do it for now, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you later.